Hey folks, this is Mr. Mega Man Fan. Like, share, comment, subscribe. You know all the things to do. There's been a major development in the analog pocket over the last few days, and I haven't seen a lot of people talking about it yet, but what happened was they released an officially supported operating system called OpenFPGA to allow developers to create cores for the analog pocket. I'll get into what that means in just a minute. But the first thing you're going to want to do is download the latest version, Pocket Firmware B3, which is also known as 1.1 Beta. Now once you download that, save it anywhere on your hard drive. I saved it to downloads for this video. Then we're going to, for the sake of argument, say this is your micro SD card that you have mounted. All you're going to do is drag and drop it into your micro SD card. Put your micro SD in your analog pocket and turn it on and it will automatically flash this firmware to your analog pocket. It's really that simple. And once it's done installing it and it reboots, you will see open FPGA on your list of supported items on the main menu. I'll show you that in a minute as well. But you're saying, okay, why is this such exciting news? What does this really mean? Well, what it does mean is you can now run ROMs directly off a micro SD card because there are now supported cores developed for OpenFPGA that can play Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color games. For example, here we have Spiritualized 1997. Some people have speculated that this is Kevtris, but there is no proof one way or the other, but Whoever this is released their GitHub repositories very quickly after the OpenFPGA firmware went live, so draw your own conclusions about who it is. The point is, they released these cores for OpenFPGA, and what you have to do is, once again, download the zip file. I'm going to save it to download. It's not just drag and drop this one. This one you're actually going to want to unzip and the contents will line up with your newly updated analog pocket. You will have folders saying assets, cores, and platforms on your micro SD card once you update the firmware. All these folders here will be here. So you're just gonna wanna directly copy all of these into the micro SD card you want those same folders with all the files that are inside them. So you can see we've got the GBA core here and in GBA common you're going to have to put a BIOS file in there. Now I'm sure for both legal and practical reasons they can't include the BIOS but here's the name of the file that you need just put that into any Google directory and you will be able to find it or DuckDuckGo or whatever search engine you use. I don't care. It really doesn't make a difference. But you're going to need the BIOS for whatever core you're running. If it's Game Boy Color and Game Boy, it'll be GBC BIOS.bin. If it's Game Boy Advance, it'll be GBA BIOS.bin. And if there are other cores, that's where they're going to have to go. They're going to go in the <laughs> common folder of the assets of the core that you're running. GBA, GBC, Game Gear, Turbo Graphics, whatever gets released as a core will have a folder in assets and a subfolder named common. Common is also where you're going to put your ROM files when you want to run them on the analog pocket. Whatever you want to run on your micro SD card, the BIOS goes here, the games go here. They all go in the folder called common. Now you're still wondering, what does this look like? How does it work? Well, let me grab the analog pocket and give you a little demonstration and you will see for yourself how smooth it is. It does take a few seconds. There is no EverDrive. There is no cartridge of any kind in here right now. So all I got to do is turn it on or hold down the button long enough to turn it on. Sometimes it takes longer than I think. 
that you can see the Open FPGA logo displays when you boot it up now. So you go to Open FPGA. I've got the Game Boy and Game Boy Color BIOS loaded, which is GBC underscore BIOS dot bin as noted. So I select Game Boy Color. I select Run. And let's pick a game that's in color. Uh, let's go with Pokemon Pinball. As you can see, it took a few seconds to load it in, but not really that long. I wouldn't call that a huge, overwhelming delay that I was waiting a year and a day for it to be available. But as you can see, you can now run directly off your micro SD card. You don't have to have an EverDrive put in there. You don't have to have some sort of hacked using the, uh, what do they call it? The, uh, the developer tool for creating games. Cause I know there was a workaround where you could rename your files and load them through the developer tool for programming. But this one, you don't even need to do that. You can just play it as is and it works just fine. Let me give you another example here. I'll pause, I'll save, and go back to menu here, confirm quit, go back to open FPGA. This time I'll go to the Game Boy Core, run, I'll select Mr. Do, because that's always been one of my favorite Game Boy games. Of course, this is the GBC BIOS bin, so Game Boy games will be in some form of colorized appearance, like a four color palette, but it will be functionally the same as playing them on an original Game Boy, as you can see here. So this could be a huge space saver for some people who want to be able to just take a game library with them and not have to worry about packing a whole bunch of individual carts. You can just play backups, or of course you can do other things as well, which Analog is quick to point out in their frequently asked questions. They're like, we... Do not promote or support emulation, that's not what this is about. But are they going to stop people from using it this way? Well, how could they? They don't really have any control over what people do on their own time. They can say what it's for, but they can't say what you do with it once you do it. That's entirely up to you. So, bottom line here, download the latest firmware. Find the GitHub repository from Spiritualize 1997. It's been linked in many places, including on Kotaku.com. It's not hard to find. The BIOS, you're going to have to find yourself. But once you do, you can run games directly off micro SD with no cart inserted. And since OpenFPGA allows people to develop any core they want for the analog pocket, the possibilities are literally endless. Like... I can see in the future there could be Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, TurboGrafx-16, any number of cores that would be compatible with the FPGA architecture inside this device.